Copyright of this video belongs to SEER Campus. Offenders will be prosecuted. Welcome to our first revision of groups for this year. We will look at R is 27 and R for is 10. Before we start with the lecture, let's just quickly discuss the applicable R for is standards that cover our group accounts. There is IS27 that relates to our separate financial statements, IFRS10 that describes the definition of control and our consolidated financial statements, investment in associates will be covered in IS28, and joint arrangements in IFRS11, and disclosure of interest in other entities in IFRS12. Then a very important standard, which will be IFRS3, and we will cover this in the following weeks. Now, let's quickly have a look at the different types of investments. There is subsidiaries. Now, guys, the criteria that we use to distinguish the type of the investment will be control. Control will be explained in detail in RFRS 10. And when we look at the shares, normally, guys, there should be 50% or more, but most important guys, they should be controlled. Therefore, this can be less than 50%. And then we need to refer to our de facto, and we will discuss this. The accounting treatment will be to consolidate in terms of RFRS 10. Now guys, we are going to focus on RFRS 10 today and on IS 27 briefly. But let's quickly discuss what is an associate. An associate will be when there is significant influence. But what is significant influence? When there is power to participate, but not control. Therefore, power to participate and make decisions. But it does not equal control as per RFRS 10. And this will normally be when there is 20% or more shares. If there's less than 20%, the probability of significant influence will be very low. And important that you know that then we will equity account. Now, what is equity account, guys? Remember, equity account is disclosing the amount as an investment in our associate at a carrying amount in our statement of financial position. And we will touch on this when we work through IS28. Joint arrangements, the criteria will be when there is joint control. Therefore, normally two or more parties that enter into an agreement where they share the control. Therefore, the share percentage will be equal if there is four parties involved. 25% each. If there is two, 50%. And now, guys, this is important. Your joint arrangement can either be a joint venture or a joint operation. If it's a joint venture, we will equity account for our joint venture in terms of IS28. When it is a joint operation, you need to ensure that you understand this. For example, we have company A and company B that enters into a joint operation. Company A 50%, company B 50%. Now, when we need to prepare the group financial statements, we will add 50% of A's assets and liabilities plus 50% of B's assets and liabilities into our group. And this is the accounting of a joint operation. Now, guys, important. What is the difference between separate financial statements and consolidated financial statements? And this is an important principle, guys. If we have, for example, a parent, we have a subsidiary. Remember, the parent has to control the subsidiary. And we have an associate. Separate financial statements refers to the separate financial statements of either a parent or a subsidiary or an associate. Each of these companies should have their own annual financial statements prepared. 
And guys, this is an important principle, especially when we look at changing control throughout the year. Now, IS27 indicates to us that in the parent records, guys, now this is important, in the separate records of our parent, in his financial statements, the parent can either recognize the investment at cost or at equity method or as a financial asset in terms of RFRS 9 and IS32. Now, guys, why is this important to us? Let's say, for example, our parent recognized the investment in terms of RFRS 9 and this investment will be at fair value through OCI. Now, do you agree with me that in the separate records, if the initial recognition of our investment is 200,000, and this will be on 1 January 2016, the fair value of that investment at the end of the year, 31 December 2016, will now be 220,000. Now, guys, in the separate financial statement, there will be an adjustment of 20,000. What will our journal entry be? We will debit the investment and we will credit our mark to market reserve. But, guys, does this happen in the group financials as well? No. We consolidate in our group and we need to include our elimination journal at the acquisition price, guys. Important. Therefore, in our group, we will have to reverse this transaction. This journal entry will be in our separate financial statements of our parent. And in our group, we need to remember to reverse this. And this is an important principle that you need to know. And this is the most important section of IS27 that you need to know and understand. Now, let's move on and look at RFRS 10. First, we will discuss what is control, and then we will look at our consolidation process. Let's discuss the definition on control. Now, control would exist if and only if the investor has all of the following. There has to be power over the investee, plus the ability to use the power, plus the exposure to variable returns. Now guys, if you think about power, if you can't use your power, it's really worthless, guys. Then only we need to look at significant influence, where we can actually make decisions, but we don't control. Therefore, guys, if you have power, you would like to use your power. And therefore, if you use your power, you would want to receive a return, variable returns on that power that you have used. Now we need to look at the definition of power on its own. This will be that there has to be an existing right that gives current ability to affect relevant activities. Now, let's first discuss what is an existing right. This will be potential voting rights or voting rights. Now, guys, important. Voting rights. What is a voting right? A voting right will provide you with the opportunity to vote. Therefore, if there is more than 50% voting rights, you can vote on board meetings and you have control. Yes. Now, what about potential voting rights? What is a potential voting right? Now, guys, this can only be considered when there are substantive. Therefore, it has to be practical to exercise this vote, guys. Therefore, this will be an example such as a convertible instrument, options, or forward contracts. And guys, very important with a potential voting right. This should be exercisable currently, not in future. Therefore, you can only take this into account if you can exercise that right now. 
currently. And this will be rights, important guys, to appoint or remove key personnel. So guys, you can make very important decisions. Rights to direct the investee in entering into certain transactions. Remember guys, if you can enter into certain transactions, you will have the ability then to use that right and then obtain variable returns. Now guys, important. We've discussed the fact that if there's more than 50% existing rights, either voting rights, potential voting rights, and so forth. But what happens if there is less than 50%? We refer to our de facto control. Now, guys, this is an important thing that you need to understand. Our de facto control can either have one, a contractual arrangement with another vote holder. Now, what does this mean, guys? Our entity that has shares in the subsidiary can have an agreement with another entity that has shares and vote on their behalf. Or two, there can be a separate contractual arrangement providing our entity with a very significant amount of rights to make decisions on very large transactions, then we can debate that there is control. Or the investors own voting rights, guys. Therefore, if we indicate the investors own voting rights, we need to take into account all of the variables. For example, if our entity has 40% shares in the subsidiary, and the remaining 60% is owned by 60 different individuals, guys, who will have the majority voting rights in this entity? Our investor. But important, guys, that you read the information provided. Let's discuss what is relevant activities. Now, guys, do you think if we have the right to manage the admin department, this will be a relevant, important activity. Now, guys, this is admin. This will not influence our return at the end of the day significantly. Therefore, this will not be admin activities. This will be activities such as selling and purchasing, research and development projects, acquisition and disposals of PPE. Therefore, this will be important activities in our entity. Now let's move on and let's discuss what is variable returns. Now guys, please ensure that you understand this. Variable returns can be dividends. Yes, this is true. But if you think about dividends, I can have an investment in a JSE listed company and receive dividends. But that does not mean that I have control, guys. Okay. Therefore, important that you understand this will include both profits as well as losses, positives and negatives, variable returns. This will be when there is synergies between these companies that will result in a return for our entities. Therefore, guys, it is important that you understand that variable returns can include a lot of things. Therefore, if there is a theory question, it is important that you include your example when you answer the question. Now, guys, what about principal versus agent? Let's explain this by means of a basic example. We have a parent that owns shares in a subsidiary. Now, this parent can appoint an agent that will act on behalf of the parent. Therefore, guys, the parent still has the shares in the subsidiary. The parent only appoints an agent to act on behalf of the parent. Therefore, important, we do not consolidate the agent, guys, as the agent is only the middleman and the decision-making rights still remains with our parent. Let's discuss our consolidation. First, look at our accounting rules. Now, important, when there is differences in our accounting policies, when the accounting policies of our parent compared to our subsidiary differs, 
we need to know that we will have to include pro forma journal entries. Now, when do we start with our consolidation process? On the date of acquisition. When do we stop? On the date of disposal. And then, guys, reporting dates. What happens if the reporting date of our parent and subsidiary does not agree? Remember that this can differ with minimum three months. However, we need to take into account if there will be additional transactions and adjustments that need to be accounted for. Now, when not to prepare consolidated financial statements, and this is important, especially when we look at our investment entity. When not to prepare consolidated financial statements, when the parent meets all of the following conditions. If the parent itself is a subsidiary, Therefore, guys, in our scenario, if we have a company that owns shares in another company, let's say company A, and we have company B, and company A owns 80% in company B. Therefore, company A will be the parent of company B. Now the question, do we have to consolidate A and B into group financials? Now, if the parent, which is A, itself is a subsidiary and they are not trading the equity, therefore, guys, they're not listed on the JSE, they're not in the process of filing to trade, and important, the ultimate parent, which will be B, will prepare consolidated financial statements. Then A does not have to prepare consolidated financial statements. Two, when the parent has a defined benefit plan as per IS 19. And three, very important one to ask us, when there is an investment entity. Now let's first discuss what is an investment entity. This is when there is funds received from investors and then invested on their behalf. Therefore, the main business purpose is to invest and they value performance based on fair value. Now, guys, important. If our parent is an investment entity and this entity owns a subsidiary, then our parent does not have to consolidate. But there is an exception included in paragraph 32 that you need to know. This is when this subsidiary is providing services similar to an investment entity to the parent, guys. They have to consolidate. Therefore, let me quickly recap. If we have a parent that is an investment entity that owns shares in a subsidiary, we do not have to consolidate. But if that subsidiary does provide services to the investment entity similar to the activities of an investment entity, we have to consolidate. Now, guys, this sort of makes sense if you think about it. If we have a holding company that's registering quite a lot of smaller subsidiaries, and the purpose of these subsidiaries is to provide services to the holding company. Then, guys, it's sort of one business. Therefore, we need to consolidate. Now, let's quickly discuss the consolidation process. Guys, I like to use the analysis of owner's equity. And this is purely for calculation purposes. This is for calculation purposes. If you want to make use of it, Please do so. If you do not, it's fine, but ensure that you understand your transactions. And then line by line combination, what does this mean? We will add the assets of the parent plus the subsidiary. And we will add the liabilities of our parent plus our subsidiaries. We will include our elimination journals and performer journals. And very important, our intra-group transactions. And guys, I just quickly want to touch on NCI. Remember that NCI, non-controlling interest, can either be measured at proportionate share or two at 
fair value. Now, what is important to know that if it is at fair value, our NCI will share in the goodwill. Guys, you need to know this. This is important. If it is at fair value, our NCR will share in the goodwill. And then, guys, we will discuss goodwill in IFRS 3. What I want you to know is that goodwill must be tested for impairment annually in terms of IS 36. And if we impair our goodwill, we may not reverse that impairment. And then I'm going to close off this lecture that you need to please read through IFRS 12. This is purely disclosure, guys. Therefore, ensure that you have flagged IFRS 12, that you know where all of the important information is included. When a question requires you to disclose an investment in a subsidiary, immediately you should be able to open IFRS 12 and view where this information is and copy this onto your page and complete the information guys this is information such as what is the name what is the percentage what is the location and so forth therefore this is not difficult information